Hey there, Michael Griffiths here, founder of Referral Marketing Guru, and welcome to this week's Get More Referral Today podcast. Can't wait to be able to share with you something special today. You don't just get to listen to me. And it's about a topic that I know that I would say the majority of service professionals have a problem with. You see, as humans, we are natural connectors. We're natural at being able to uh, build friendships and live in tribes and get along with each other. So when it comes for asking for something, that sale, do you want to work with me? For whatever reason, we find that difficult. We find that a little bit awkward. And sometimes we go to sales scripts and other times we say, oh, we could use this NLP language. And other times, well, maybe if I just follow this particular system, it'll work. And so often it doesn't because what actually has to happen is about what you're about to learn. So I'm really excited to be able to bring on two people today who I met oh, probably a couple of months ago and straight away, like I'm always a little bit wary about salespeople, not because they're salespeople, but because most of the time they're very hunter focused and there's nothing wrong with being a hunter, but you need to have a bit of that farmer in you at the same time. And what hit a chord straight away was just how authentic and more importantly, how they actually want everyone to win. And when you put those things together, you're coming from a completely different place when you go about sales. And it's what I absolutely love straight away. So without further ado, I'm going to bring on what who are now I classify two good friends, uh, Oliver and David. They're coming from uh, Canada over there. So even though it's morning here, it's there at the end of their day. Um, yeah. uh, and I'm really excited to allow them and, and pretty much be able to pick their brains on your behalf. Because as always, this is about helping you grow your business and being able to make more impact with your clients than ever before. Oliver, David, welcome. You're in the midst of winter. You probably yes, got the, the <laughs> hair on full ball where we're at 41 degrees Celsius on the weekend, wow. uh, like 120 Fahrenheit. <laughs> Rub it in our so face. good to have you guys with us. <laughs> yeah, well, well, it's a blizzard out here right now. Yeah. All I see is white. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so good. So uh, fill me in. How, how did you guys get into this? Why did you get into it? Give us a bit of a, a, a backstory to start with. So, David, if I start with you and then Oliver, you join, join in. Yeah, you got it. love it. Amazing. Well, you know, I'll, I'll give a little background for me. You know, I've been in in the world of business and sales for the last decade, and um, you know, I've really been in a different, a bunch of different industries, from marketing to consulting. But I've spent a lot of time inside of the coaching and expert space. And um, you know, Oliver and I have been friends now for for about a decade. And you know, we had a feeling we'd end up working together at some point. We didn't know how. It all started because we partnered with a company um, called Kaboom coaching. And uh, it was with one of my good friends and mentors, Preston Smiles, and he was building a company. He needed support with building his sales team. And he had knew, known me. He had known I'd been in the space for a little bit. So he brought me on board to which I eventually brought Oliver on board. And we were able to take that company to doing about three and a half to $4 million that year. Um, and, uh, and we really were able to help them scale uh, while building their sales team in a really authentic way. And if you know anything about coaches or consultants or, you know, most of them are very sensitive. And so the, you know, old sales tactics, the manipulative approaches, that stuff just doesn't work. You know, it'll just close them off and they won't want anything to do with it. You know, if you know Preston Smiles, he's a very heart-centered guy. And so we knew we needed to sell in alignment with how he was, right? We wanted to make sure that if people heard from Preston and then they hopped on a call with our team, that they felt congruent. They felt the same way. And so we were able to do some amazing stuff there with Ollie coming in with his sales background, supporting on the operations side, me coming in on the people side. And eventually we decided, well, hey, you know, if we can do this for Preston, why don't we expand? Why don't we keep doing this? And along the journey, we kind of found that we uh, we have a love here for um, you know the world of entrepreneurship, for coaches, for salespeople. But more importantly, we have a love for doing it in a way that's authentic and in integrity and creates win-win-win relationships. And so in that process, we've been able to build our agency and we've been able to build our conscious sales training program that's now launching so we can uh, make conscious sales no longer the outlier but the standard in our industry. Love it. Love yeah. it. Oliver, jump in. Yeah, man. Um, so to speak to just the story, I guess, or the, the history is ultimately 
what I think is really cool is David and I, again, having such a deep level of experience and expertise in the sale and sales of all, all kinds, you know, online, in person, demos, products, luxury, commodity, like anything you can think of, it's been sold by either both of us or one of us. And I think where, where the magic really happened is that I discovered my my zone of genius being more relative to operations and systems and automations and integrations and all these kinds of things. And David's was much more towards like the people development and the people like like training and all this stuff and just a master trainer, like just hands down, truly a master trainer. And so us coming together was this cool like yin yang situation uh, that that really blew up into being able to bring success to so many other coaching businesses and such. So I think that's ultimately like I think one of the coolest takeaways from from our, our story so far is, you know, there's a lot of people that are afraid of, of getting into business with like friends or or family or things like that. And, and truly, like it's something to be careful of. And if you have a an appropriately deep relationship with a friend, a friend can be the best person to get into business with because you already have trust, you already have transparency, you already have like all these things that are important in a relationship in a business relationship. So um, it's been a really cool journey so far. We've been we're two and a half years into it. And, you know, Dave and I, we don't really have arguments as much as we have disagreements that we get aligned about and then make take action. <laughs> right? Yeah, nice. Love it. Love it. Um, so so let's go down this path to start with uh, uh, around sales, because you're right. The majority of people that are providing some sort of service, sales is they hate it. The, the, mm-hmm. Whatever the reason, whatever the block. And uh, I, I feel because most people see sales as I'm taking something from somebody else. Yeah. And Love obviously that. when yeah. we're brought up, so we're not taught to do that. We're, we're, we're taught to, to share or we're taught to be able to. So how how do you see sales? What do, If I said, David, what's sales? What mm. is it? How do you see it? Yeah, it's a great question, man. Um, and, and you're right. It's unfortunate. I'll, I'll ask, answer the question first. But, uh, you know, we see sales as a method of, um, I mean, the, the term I use a lot is transformation. Um, for me, sales is a tool of transformation and it's a tool of helping someone get a result that they want in their life, which is ultimately really it, really what it is. We buy things because we want a specific result. We buy things because we want to feel a certain way. We buy things because we want a certain experience. Sales is just the art of helping this person see the thing that they want and take action towards it. Right, whether it be in the coaching industry where it's bettering their relationship or their business, or whether it's going to buy a new Tesla, right? Everything comes down to how I want to feel and how I want to experience my life. What is the future that I believe in? And if I can help someone see the future that they want to create and help them see how with my thing, my service, my program, my offer, I can help them get to the future that they want, then people will move forward. People will buy. And I think it's it's unfortunate that so many salespeople, so much of the industry has created a bad rep around sales by trying to convince people to do something or buy something that they don't actually need or want, something that won't actually help them get to what they want. And so because of that, sales is a bad name. Right. They think that if I get on a sales call with someone, this person is going to try to manipulate me, convince me to do something that I don't want to do. And our vision is that that's never associated to sales again. Our vision is that sales, when people think of getting on a sales call, when people think about talking to someone about their services, they know for a fact that that person is going to care enough about them to only help them see how they can get towards their future that they want, even if it means not working with them and working with someone else. Yeah, all these or anything you want to add to that? Mm. The only thing that comes up for me is just around the how you sort of landed it there. I think one of my favorite parts of like conscious sales is the idea of like supporting people and making a buying decision, whether it's a yes or a no, they're equally valuable because our job is sort of to shepherd them to what they need. And if it means, as David said, not doing what it is I have to sell, but someone that I know or I'm connected with, it's one of the most fun and exciting things. And you of all people in the referral business know this, that the most fun thing is connecting someone else and seeing something happen of the two. Like there's nothing more gratifying than that. And so I think that that's one of the coolest things to really be able to embody in in conscious sales is it's like 
not being attached to the sale happening with you, but to it being that they get the best thing possible and you do your best to support them in, in doing that. Yeah, Love so that. true. Love it. Love it. So so let's continue same sort of path. Marketing sales. Mm. Marketing and sales. For most people, it's just this one thing. And I'm like, no. Marketing gets you exposure. It allows people to actually understand who you are. And sales is more so about, is there a fit? Can we actually help you? Can we actually make your life better? Talk to me yeah. about that because you must see the same thing. And when you go about the, the sales part, how do you bring them apart? Mm. How do you put in a process for the sales bit? Go down that path for me. Yeah. Ollie, you want to jump in? Maybe even share Nick as an example as someone who is a marketing agency and bringing us on board it might be relevant here, but feel free to share. Sure. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I'll speak more high level and then we could speak to the specific client as necessary. So at the end of the day, like the way we think about our agency, and I think it'll answer this question, is that we are three things. We're sales strategy, sales system, and sales team. And the sales system portion has to do with like the software stack and integrations, all that kind of fun stuff. And we're very clear that the point at which we begin is the point at, of application, right? Where they become a clearly engaged lead. And so for those who know like $100 million leads, right? A lead is someone you can contact. An engaged lead is someone who you, who you can't, can contact but has shown interest. And so someone who's actually like applied, they become a part of that, that sort of sales funnel, if you will. And so we're really clear about it being there. And it makes it easy because as soon as you have like crossed wires, and this is just like business operations in general, right? As soon as you're not very clear about these places, no one takes any ownership, right? If you have more than one owner, you have no owner. And so we are always extremely clear that it needs to be at that point. Now, depending on your service, your offer, your this, that, the other, you might not have an application per se, but it is important to just, to us, it's like that point where they have very clearly said like, hey, I'm interested in buying. Then, like you said, Michael, it's like, great, well, let's make sure that you buying is in your best interest. Like that's ultimately what the salesperson is, is there for, right? Yeah, love yeah, it. Just to, so while just to add to there, that. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, go for it. Go uh, for I was it. just going to say, just to, just to add to that, um, you know, we, we had a client come to us recently who we onboarded who uh, runs a marketing agency. And they're great at attracting leads. They're great at creating awareness. They're great at building initial relationships but they hate the sales side of things. And so they ended up bringing us on board to handle that side of things because you know they recognize like, hey, we can bring people through the door. We can create enough interest, but the process of getting them from interested to committed, mm -hmm. they weren't that great at, right? They brought in a bunch of team members and they couldn't quite nail that down. And so we came in and now we're building process in order to do that. But you know, someone who has this skill set of gaining attention may not, it's a completely different skill set to gain attention as it is to guide someone to making a decision to better their life in some way and make a decision to actually move forward on, on, on your service or someone else's. And so, yeah, I look at those as very different skill sets. They need to be harmonized. They need to work together, right? They come, we, we actually in a lot of ways call departments, mm -hmm. growth departments, which is contrary to sometimes separating it. But the reason we do that is we want marketing and sales to work together, but we need to recognize that they're, they're, they're two very different. Things. They're two very different skill sets. Yeah, nice, nice. And, and I think the key there that, that Oliver said for people who find it hard between the two is application. You need to have some way for someone to say, I am interested mm -hmm. and ready to engage with you. And whether mm -hmm. that's a form they fill in, whether that's something that they've got to do, unless you know who those people are, really, everyone just sits in the pool of totally. maybe. Right. So uh, I think that's a huge takeaway for people here is what do you do that allows somebody to actually tell you that they are interested and ready to engage with you? And they're the people who now start the sales process with you. Yeah. Okay. Um, what, are, what are the mistakes? <laughs> what are the mistakes you see all the time with people in making sales? Let's, let's just say, let's take the top, top two, take one each. What, what, what's the what's the biggest mistakes you see with people making these sales? David, yeah, start us off. I'll, I'll jump in. Funny enough, man, we, yeah, had, I was gonna... 
We have a whole lead mag. We have a whole training on the seven things that people do to sabotage their sales. And, it literally uh, sounds like you just teed us up for this lead mag. Yeah, yeah. For the record, we, we, we hilarious. And you can give it to your audience <laughs> for free for sure. But um, I, I know you didn't know that. But the, the main thing for me that I see over and over again is um, when the person who is selling spend way more time talking about their thing talking about their service, talking about their offerings, and not nearly enough time asking the right questions to the person that they're speaking to and understanding what their deep bleeding neck problem is, what the cost is of them taking, of not taking action, what they're actually committed to doing about this situation and what their goals and vision are. And far too many people go in and they just like throw their offer at people and, and hope that that person actually says, okay, cool, let's move forward. But the truth is, is most people aren't fully clear on their deepest challenges, on why they're not actually where they want to be, and on how they're going to get to where they want to be. And so we look at whether you're a coach, whether you're an actual on a sales call, you're an advisor, and you're there to deeply understand the person you're speaking with so you could advise them to make the right decision. So you can help them see the roadmap from where they are to where they want to be. But if you spend all your time talking about your offerings, talking about your services, you're not actually going to understand what the problem at play is here. And that person on the other side won't feel like you truly understand them. And if they don't feel like you don't fully understand them, they're not going to trust you. They're not going to feel safe. And they're not going to want to move forward with you regardless of what you offer them, regardless of how good the deal is or how many bells and whistles you have on your offer. People buy from people they feel understand them. And that is key. If you don't spend enough time understanding them, they're not going to want to buy from you. So that's the biggest thing that I notice. Love it. Yeah. Okay. I think I'll even uh, just real quick, I'll, I'll answer separately, but I also want to piggyback on that as well. <clears throat> What's I think hilarious is we know give or take about 10 percent of people that actually get onto a sales call are already ready to buy and so the salesperson can be an order taker in that circumstance and so when and and it, what kind of sucks is that entire businesses are built on that like 10 percent, <laughs> which is wild uh because they don't know how to do what david just said now they'll just be like all right you're calling me so here's the stuff you know take it take it or go and that's that's the 10 percent close rate or less um and so that's what's great about our approach we're able to achieve like 30 40 50 60 percent close rates on some of our campaigns because we're taking the time to deepen the conversation and the relationship so it's really really cool and then one other thing i want to speak to on on what david said as well real quick is you know again we're speaking to coaching and experts and all that stuff but this applies to building a deck like even if someone wants to build a deck when they got on a call with someone or a contractor, that contractor has the opportunity to really understand like what is your vision, your dream, like what is it you're looking for? Like you're looking to hang out with as many as what, eight people on this deck? Are you looking to have like a nice view? Like there's so much to understand about that deck. It's not like you just go, you're like, oh, I want a deck, great, I'll show up and build you a deck. Like really understand what it is they're looking to achieve and feel and just and have with this deck. Some people want just them and their husband because they're retired and they don't have many friends, who knows? Others want to host entire parties. That's a completely different deck. <laughs> and so it's really important to get into that depth. Now, specifically for your question earlier, um, one of the things I see very often, I mean, there's there's so many different things. Uh, but I, I really like, I like to talk about follow-up a lot. Um, follow-up to me is is something that, I mean, we've heard it before, fortune is in the follow-up, right? It's a pretty common line. And I feel too many people come in not prepared enough for the initial call and therefore not prepared enough to continue after that first call. There's just this yeah. like all in energy on that first call. And that if it doesn't happen, there's this sense of being let down. And to me, I'm like, personally, like, I'm more of an expectation of like, it's going to require follow-up. It's going to require multiple calls. And if it happens on the first call, that's great. But my intention is to be ready to go into multiple calls because it's just, again, like even on that first call, they're still themselves in so much discovery state. They're still trying to like even see like, do I trust this guy? Right. And someone who's coming in with an intention to close on the first call, not usually very trustworthy energy. And so I think there's that like opportunity to just, just switch the intention of like, I'm not looking to close on this call. I'm looking to serve on this call. And if what that results in is a close on the first call, great. But maybe with the best way to serve is to say, hey, you know what? Let's have a call with you and your wife next in, in two days. Let's put that in the calendar or something. 
Um, so being really clear about that. And obviously that naturally means, Hey, let's get dialed about what your follow-up process is. And we could talk about that all day. But. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's just to right. add to that real quick, it's like sales is a game of relationships and mm -hmm. most people, and it's kind of unfortunate, but there's, I call it an epidemic of closers out there that are mm -hmm. just preaching one call closes. And it's at a detriment to people. It's at a detriment to human beings because you're putting the sale above the human being. You're putting the credit card above actually serving this person. But if you look at it the way that Oliver is sharing, you can build a genuine relationship over time. And guaranteed, even if you don't make that sale, you'll make more money. Because who's this person going to go to if they have someone else that comes to them seeking someone? Well, they, they're going to trust you because you didn't just try to sell them. Right? You actually tried to serve them. And so they're going to want to bring more people your way. Mm -hmm. uh, love it. Love it. Um, which just aligns beautifully. Um, uh, on on the, the 10%, and we actually, we actually did something more maybe only a week or two ago. Exactly right. And we've got this big, colorful diagram where the, the top of the, the triangle, 3% uh, are buyer ready and 7% mm -hmm. are open to buying. Yep. And 60% are not thinking about buying or not yep. thinking they even need it, but could change their mind. Mm -hmm. And then the final 30% are just not interested. And yep. exactly what That's you guys are talking about, is if, this if is about. you're not showing interest, if you're, if you're not following up, if you're not there to serve, you're never going to get that yellow 60% zone. You're mm -hmm. only ever going to get the people who pretty much are buyer ready or open to buying. So uh, I think it's a great <laughs> kick up the backside for a lot of people to go, you know what? If you only are going to focus on that top green zone, your business ain't going to be very good because you've already limited yourself to the number of people that you could actually help. So yeah. uh, love it. Love it. Um, so that uh, lead magnet for the people listening, uh, we're not going to keep it. Of course, we're going to put it in the description below. So <laughs> make sure you click on it. Make sure you get those seven mistakes and uh, really start improving you know, yourself. Um, so let's flip it. We've got the mistakes. What's one thing that, that someone could do? Let's say they, they've got themselves, um, then they're not quite ready to be able to, to scale it or to be able to bring in a team. Um, but what's something that they could do that would sort of help them over the next sort of 30, 60 days and for them to realize, you know what, I'm actually okay at this. Well, what, what could that be? David, go for it. I can see your mind ticking over and you're like, which one out of the 10 should I pick? So, so your, your question is, what is one thing that someone who is taking their own sales calls can yeah. do to improve um, their process and improve yeah. their close rate immediately? Is that, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah. I want to give you guys a framework that, um, yeah, actually, I'll, I'll give you one. Um, the best thing that you could do right now to improve your close rates, to get more, to enroll more aligned clients is join our conscious sales training. No, I'm just kidding. Um, the one <laughs> thing that you can do is, uh, I'm, I'm not actually kidding, but I'm going to give you one thing, is stop waiting till the end of the call to move through objections. So many people wait till the end of the call to actually find out if there's any concerns whatsoever within the, the, you know, the person is thinking about. And because of that, they end up in this really awkward place where they have 10 minutes left of the call. They've just finished offering what they have. And now they're in this weird place of like, they have to get off the call in 10 minutes. This person is trying to take in all the information that you just gave them. They're processing the investment. They're processing the information. They're processing everything you just shared. And it's overwhelming. So naturally, they're going to have to book a follow-up call, which is fine. We just talked about that we want to build relationships. That's okay. But the best possible thing that you can do is look out for these concerns earlier and address them earlier on. We want to, I want to address as many fears. I want to address as many concerns through the conversation as I can. So by the time I get to actually offering my services, there's nothing else to talk about except how do we move forward? That's what I want to do is streamline that whole process. So by the end of the conversation, we're just talking about next steps. We're talking about commitments. And so how do we do that? Well, you want to look for signals. So for example, if someone told me on the call that they said, hey, David, I just lost my job. That's a signal to me that this person might have a hard time investing in themselves. So I want to explore that right away with them. 
I want to ask them, Hey, you just told me you lost your job. Like, you know, but you're also looking for us. You're looking for support. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Like, how do you see yourself investing in support if you actually just lost your job? Right. I want to explore that for them as soon as it come up. If someone tells me that they just invested in another company, maybe a few months ago, and then that company just didn't do what they said they want to do. I will explore that right away because I know this person is going to have a trust issue. Right? This person is going to be afraid to move forward because they were just screwed over. And so I want to address that and talk to them about that to find out what happened. Because if I could find out what happened, I can help build a plan around it and help this person see that they can trust us moving forward. So we don't want to wait till the end to talk about objections. We want to bring it up earlier in the call. I have a simple process that I'll give to all your audience around how to actually navigate these. It's called the ACT method. And the ACT method stands for, so it's A-C-T, it stands for acknowledge, clarify, and transmute. The idea behind the ACT method is every time someone has a fear and objection, which is just a simple barrier that's coming up that they need your help rising above, we want to acknowledge them. Hey, I totally understand that you're in a financially hard place right now. Clarify. Can you tell me a bit more about that? What do you mean by that? I know you're looking to explore an investment, but you said you're also in a hard place. Can you tell me more about that? I want to understand. And transmute simply means helping this person make a commitment to move to the other side of it. If they actually want to move forward, if they actually want to do something different, I want to hear what that commitment is to actually get to the other side of it. Transmute. So that's a simple process that you could use that we teach in Conscious Sales um, that anyone can use to help bring up objections earlier and help handle them earlier. So by the time you get to the end of the conversation, you're actually having a buying conversation versus a overwhelming, you just gave me a ton of information. I need to think about a conversation. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Um, on a, on the systems process side, Oliver, <laughs> your, your favorite part. Yes, sir. What's, what's something that most people either don't have or should have or need to be putting in place, need to be thinking about what what's mm. something which you go, oh, I can't believe you don't have that. Or <laughs> that's the sort of thing you have to have. Go get yeah. it done. Yeah, interesting. Um, okay, so mm. Man, there's so okay. So we'll start with like an obvious one and then maybe address a couple other ones. Um there's a lot of, there's actually still a lot of people who don't understand who know softwares like Zapier or Zapier, depending on how you want to call it. Surprisingly, still don't. So in case you don't know what Zapier is, just going to quickly see this. It's a, a very easy to use uh, platform that allows you to connect other softwares together and create automations. What's really cool is that they've recently released an AI with it, right? AI is everything now, but it's really cool. You can literally tell it, hey, I'm looking to have it that when a jot form application comes through it, uh, you know, a populates a Google sheet and updates my HubSpot or something. So, and then the Zapier will actually create a template version of that through AI. So it's gotten easier than ever to create automations right now using their Zapier AI. It's really cool. So that's an important tidbit. Um, the next thing is that I'd say is like, uh, it's kind of more just related to people when I think about it. It's as you're growing a business, the biggest mistake that can be made is, is letting it be too personality driven. And we learned this a lot from our own mentor, uh, Alex Sharfin, and we apply it a lot ourselves, which is basically like personality driven versus process driven. It's like, it does the whole business come to a halt if you're sick, right? And if so, it means it's personality driven. Process driven means you could get sick and everything still continues. And so you need to be asking yourself like, well, if I did get sick, what are the things that would stop or halt as a result of me being sick? great. Now I need to proceduralize those things so that when that happens, because not if that happens, it will happen, uh, especially if you have kids or something like shit's going to happen. Uh, you need to get those processes put in place. And so it's around documentations, SOPs, all those kinds of things are just so needed. And again, the filter for it, and I kind of already just said it, but it's like, if I were to disappear today, could someone take up what I was doing tomorrow? If the answer is not a very clear yes, you have a problem, you have a liability, you have a risk. And that needs to be true for every single person on your team. Love it. Love it. And so true. And I reckon the majority of people would say, yes, I have a problem. <laughs> just stop. So, so true. Um, just as we, as we bring this towards an end, tell us about how, tell us a bit about the, the sales uh, conscious program, uh, the, the, the course.
course, that you've just been able to launch. I think that's a great starting point for so many people totally. who are hesitant around sales or are wanting to do sales more authentically. And, and I'm not going to go more better, but in, in the end, if you're more confident in the way that you sell because you have a process to follow you have a, a structure a framework to be able to follow it gives you more confidence and sales is so much just about confidence and yeah. and when you're feeling good naturally you talk with more authority you talk more as a leader people yeah. want to be around you and that's so much of it so um we we know that like it's seven percent of the words you use is what all that people pick up the remaining 93% is everything else. Mm -hmm. So if you ain't coming across as this, hey, I am here to help you type of person, then you're already behind the eight ball. So yeah. let people know how they can actually improve their sales and, and do the things with you guys. Yeah, love it. Uh, you know, I love what you said because um, really it's about making sales the most natural part of your business. And it should be. Right. It should it should be easy. It should feel good for you to go out and talk about your services and go out and enroll new clients. That should feel exciting. That should enthuse you. And you should have a process that, you know, works every single time. And you can confidently enroll 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 percent of the people you speak with or 70 percent of the right people that you speak with. Right. Because we don't want to enroll the wrong people. And so, um, you know, over the last few years, we've, we've accumulated a ton of, of knowledge around building sales teams, around um, what works and what doesn't in the coaching and expert and, and service industries. And so finally, we've put all this together into a really cohesive conscious sales training. It's launching January 11th. Um, it'll be the first time we're ever launching that. So because of it, it'll be the most affordable it's ever been. Uh, we're really excited. We're taking on 25 people, 25 coaches, experts, um, online service entrepreneurs who are looking to master their sales process in a really ethical way that makes them feel good about their process so they can go and enroll clients consistently. It's going to be a mix of community, content, coaching, and practice. We're going to get deep into mastery. We're going to hold each other accountable. We're going to review calls. It's good. You're going to come out the other side feeling exceptionally more confident about sales than you have than you were when you walked in. And that's our commitment. That's our promise. All and with actual results, that. right? Well, just to piggyback the important part, because I think that a lot of these trainings, they, so again, we asked ourselves, right? And I think this is what everyone needs to do. It's like, well, what, what's the training we would want, right? I think that that's really important. And what would really get the result that we ultimately want? And really when people are coming into a sales training, like, yeah, they want to learn how to sell, but really like, don't they want to get sales? Like, wouldn't that be cool? And so we've, kind of crafted the, the the whole thing to be that it's actually the content is front loaded and then we have practice on the back end and we're really intentional about making sure that assuming people are taking sales calls which has to be part of it's one of the qualifiers anyways you've got to be taking sales calls you will leave the program with a higher roi because we're making sure there's space to actually do the thing and practice it and get results so that's super super exciting about what how we we formatted this whole thing Love it. And in terms of finding out more information about it, about yours, we'll put the link below. Dave. Yeah, I mean, it's really just ConsciousSales.com. So it's super, super simple. www.ConsciousSales.com. There you go. So we will put the link below. Uh, I thought you might yes, have sir. this fancy little back cave way to have to go through and talk to you guys but that nice and easy so uh, make sure below in the in the description wherever you are listening to this even watching it across youtube uh get into that description get your your lead magnet on the seven mistakes and go check out the launching january 11th which would be january 12th my day uh um, <laughs> go and check out the the opportunity to really improve your sales uh, mm -hmm. All that, David, really appreciate you guys jumping on, uh, sharing so much wisdom. If you took nothing away from this, then honestly, um, <laughs> easily get cleaned out because there were so many good little things there that can improve your sales really fast. Um, and uh, if you're not in the business of relationships and finding out how you can actually help people, sales is much harder than what it needs to be. So mm -hmm. even if that's you, oh, the only thing you took away out of it, uh, you're already going to be so far forward compared to how most people do their sales. So 
Uh, guys, really appreciate you jumping on and joining us. And uh, uh, everyone else, we look forward to seeing and hearing from you next week. Take hey, care, everyone. Thank you, man. Thank you so much. Thank you.